Hello friends, today we are going to discuss about practical aspects or practical steps of dialectical behavioral therapy. I am Dr. Suresh Badadmat, Officer of Psychiatry, working at Nimans, Bangalore. Before I start my presentation, I would like to place this disclaimer. This presentation is for academic and training purpose only. For clinical opinion, please do contact a psychiatrist. Conflict of interest, none. In this video, I am going to discuss about what is dialectical behavioral therapy, what are the theories behind dialectical behavioral therapy and what are the practical steps for dialectical behavioral therapy. This video is targeted to psychiatrists, doctors, nurses, mental health professionals, psychotherapists and counsellors. Dialectical behavioral therapy. What does the meaning of dialectics? Here, dialectics means discovering what is true by considering opposite theories. Here, the patient will have extreme thinking and the therapist also may have certain prejudice or maybe thinking. Here, you need to accept the way the patient is. At the same time, you need to help the client to grow by changing from the whatever the thinking process to the midway where they can accept and move forward. The dialectical behavioral therapy was developed by Marsha M. Linehan. You need to understand why dialectical behavioral therapy was introduced. Dialectical behavioral therapy was originally developed for individuals who are very suicidal, for individuals who met the criteria for borderline personality disorder. Marsha M. Linehan tried to treat borderline personality disorders patients with cognitive behavioral therapy. Unfortunately, cognitive behavioral therapy was not helpful. The persons with borderline personality disorders had high emotional dysregulation, high behavioral disturbances. At the same time, they were not compliant with th therapy and cognitive behavioral therapy was not helping them. Hence, the modification was started and the modification over a period of time became dialectical behavioral therapy which is very highly effective in borderline personality disorder. Hence, DBT is considered as a broad-based cognitive behavioral therapy and developed for suicidal patient and borderline personality disorder patients. Let's understand how the evolution from cognitive behavioral therapy to dialectical behavioral therapy it occurred. You can easily understand if you are able to remember the symptoms of borderline personality disorders. The domains which falls under the borderline personality disorders are emotional dysregulation, the borderline personality disorders have extreme anger and affective instability. In such a scenario, cognitive behavioral therapy does not work. Simple reason is amygdala is hyperactive and amygdala has hijacked the prefrontal cortex that is a thinking center. That means when it is hijacked, you may not be able to think at all. Then how does CBT works? CBT will not be helpful because the thinking process is not there. Because of the highly emotional in nature, the behavioral dysregulation is very high. That means deliberate self-harm, suicidal attempt, impulsivity is very high in borderline patient. Further, since the thinking process has gone for a toss, cognitive dysregulation, splitting will be there. Extreme thinking is very common in borderline personality disorder. Because of all these symptoms, the interpersonal relationship will be in a very bad situation. The borderline personality disorders will have stormy relationship or else they have a fear of abandonment. Hence, they have a very less friends. And this makes, makes them to be isolated. Finally, because of all these things, they have a self-disregulation. That means they have emptiness and identity disturbance. All these symptoms cannot be addressed by cognitive behavioral therapy. Hence, the dialectical behavioral therapy was brought in. So, the DBT targets the borderline personality disorders through addition of skill training. Skill training in mindfulness, interpersonal skills, emotional regulation and distress tolerance. This paradigm shift from just cognitive behavioral therapy, here you are bringing individual therapy, skills training and telephone counselling. That is the, this paradigm shift brought in dialectical behavioral therapy and also that therapy became very useful in borderline personality disorder. Let's look into the theoretical aspect of dialectical behavioral therapy. There are two important theories which you should remember. One is dialectics, 
which is the heart of dialectical behavioral therapy. Biosocial theory, it is the backbone of dialectical behavioral therapy. Of course, since DBT originated from cognitive behavioral therapy, there are cognitive theories, behavioral theories and social learning theories. And of course, the Eastern concept of mindfulness is also brought in DBT. But what we are interested in, two important topics that is dialectics theory and biosocial theory. Dialectical theories means it is a philosophical argument that involves some sort of contradictory process between two opposing sides. Here, the patient will have two extreme thinking. That means either it is black or white, there is no grey. Either a person is very good or he is very bad. That kind of splitting or extreme thinking is common in a same person. Not only that, the client will have one stand about the thinking process, about a certain event. Whereas, the therapist will have another important thinking. That means we have two important thinking. But unfortunately, the dialectical behavioral therapy says we need to accept the client the way he is. That means you have accepted. Then what next? Since we have accepted the client, the client also need to accept himself. Once they have accepted the way they are and they are in a painful situation. Now, once you have accepted, now you lead you need to lead them to the painless situation. That means growth, improvement, moving from painful to painless situation. That is what is dialectics and that is dialectical behavioral therapy. Let me give you an example. Another one is like deliberate self-harm. Deliberate self-harm may help in short term. If there is a fight between a couple, the lady may attempt deliberate self-harm. That may be because of she wants to overcome that feeling of or fear of abandonment or depression or irritability by cutting herself. That may release her frustration. At the same time, her boyfriend will give attention. That means in a temporary period, this kind of behavior was helpful to her. But in the long term, she may lose a lot of things. She may be admitted to the hospital. She may not be able to go to the job. Again, the boyfriend will reinforce her behavior. That means every time she has frustration, she will cut herself. In the long run, it is not going to help. That means we have extreme thinking here. One, in the short term it is helpful. But however, in the long term it is detrimental to her. That means the truth is contextualized. It may be from one perspective right, but in the long term perspective it is wrong. Here, dialectics avoids extreme and rigid thinking. That is what is dialectical behavioral therapy all about. Moving to the second important theory, biosocial theory. Here, it is the reciprocal interaction between environmental invalidation and genetic vulnerability leading to the emotional dysregulation. Here, we need to understand invalidation. Invalidation means when a child is growing, it has its own experience, thoughts, emotions and behavior. If the parents, family members, friends, school teachers constantly criticize the child, minimize the behavior of the child, insults the child, bullying, trivializing, punishing the child and calling the child as a manipulator leads to the invalidation and over a period of time. Because of the genetic already vulnerability is there, the child will develop to various psychiatric disorder, borderline personality disorders, eating disorder and various other psychopathology. This is how I can explain to you. There is emotional dysregulation which is basically because of genetic vulnerability and in an environment which is invalidating the child. This is biosocial theory. Moving to the aim of dialectical behavioral therapy. In the important aim of dialectical behavioral therapy is to replace the ineffective, maladaptive or non-skilled behavior with skillful response. That means the client has maladaptive behaviors that need to be changed. To do skills training to help the client to acquire the important needed skills so that he can grow. That means you are accepting the client and the client also accept. Yes, there are some skills which are deficit, but I am accepted. At the same time, you need to move 
from painful situation to painless situation for which the therapist will guide and the client need to move forward for the growth. So how does this goal is achieved? The goal is achieved by four important components. Individual psychotherapy, group skills training, telephone counseling and finally therapist consultation team. Because by providing all this, the therapist burnout is very high. Therapist may get stuck. He may not be able to move forward or else the DBT therapist may not be able to help the client at all. In such a scenario, therapist consultation team will help the therapist for guiding him, supporting him and providing the framework in which he has to operate. Let's understand the DBT. The components are individual therapy, skills training, telephone support and DBT consultation team. All these four components is very essential for original dialectical behavioral therapy. If one is missing, it will not be considered as dialectical behavioral therapy. As for Marshall and Han, all those four important components should be there to call it as DBT. Now let's discuss about individual therapy. DBT, especially the individual therapy means it will be one session per week. Each session lasts for 45 to 60 minutes and these sessions last for one year. That means approximately 48 to 52 sessions will be there. At the same time, the quality of individual therapy occurs by the DBT consultation team. That means therapist also should go weekly once for the DBT consultation team. Further, there should be intake session. We be briefly talking about the problems of the patients or the client, discuss about the expectation of the client, role of the therapist and the client, training, skills training need to be emphasized, sessions, session duration, skills training, frequency and payment need to be discussed during the intake session. Especially in DBT, intake session should be very clear. The structure of the therapy will be usually semi-structured, homework assignment discussion should occur, contact details, weaning, number of sessions, how the Relapse prevention, booster sessions will be organized, will be discussed in individual therapy initially. At the same time, role of individual therapy, skills training, telephone consultation, DBT consultation should be discussed with the client. At the same time, you need to say, although there are four different things, the individual therapist will be the primary therapist responsible for the client problem and providing therapy. In the initial sessions, rapport building and also discussion about the communication tile which the therapist will be doing. Initially, it has to be reciprocal. Once the rapport is very well built, then the therapist need to attempt irreverent communication. Here, the therapist may approach alternative point of view or else paradoxical point of view. And you need to understand, sometimes the client may go into crisis, but you should be sure and also to be ready to provide support. At the same time, you need to have empathizing skills, plus such as active listening, reflection, paraphrasing, summarizing, non-verbal skills, appropriate emotional response and validation. Empathizing video is there in my YouTube channel. Please watch those empathizing skills videos. And the next important thing in individual therapy is goal setting. The goal setting means the client need to identify what is the long-term goal in life? What is the goal of this therapy? That means you need to have two important long-term goal and short-term goal. Invariably, whenever you discuss with the client, invariably, the client will say, I want to be happy. That means it is a very, very general statement. Now you need to move from the general statement to very specific, observable, measurable, actionable goal which can be achieved over a period of one year. Hence, the goal setting should be very specific, flexible and collaborative work should start. And invariably, in goal setting, the client will say, I want to be happy. I should not have any depression. I want to be successful. Now, you need to break down each of this into a specific, achievable general goal. From the general goal to specific goal, I want to be happy. If the patient says, okay, if you need to be happy, what you should do now? What you should do one week from now? What are the important components or steps you need to take now 
to be happy. At the same time, in long term, what you should do from now to achieve that goal. That means, to have a goal setting, you need to have this smart mnemonics. That means goal setting should be very specific, which should be measurable, which is achievable, realistic and time scale. That's very essential. So if you are able to have this goal setting, you can see the changes which are achieved by the client in DBT. And again, in individual therapy, you will be adapting dialectical strategies. That is unconditional acceptance of the client and the client need to accept himself. That is very essential. Encouraging the growth. That is very essential. Once the growth starts, then the dialectical behavioral therapy works. At the same time, the therapist over a period of time should attempt devil's advocate, that is paradoxical therapy, or else irreverent communication should be started. At the same time, whenever the client has a crisis, the therapist should help the client to look for the silver lining in all these challenges so that the client starts moving forward. That means in every disaster, there is an opportunity, there is something to learn that need to be taught to the client. Homework assignment and every session should start with reviewing the homework assignment and if there is a poor compliance for the homework, then behavior which are coming in the way of this should be addressed at the earliest. And once at the end of maybe 8 or 9 months, you should start thinking of weaning of the individual therapy. Hence, you need to discuss the number of individual therapy sessions from the beginning and at the end of each session you should say we have finished these many number of sessions and these many numbers of sessions are left. By doing this, you are reminding the client yes, we are moving at a constant rate and the improvement also should be in the similar line and the client is prepared for weaning. At the same time, Relapse prevention and booster session should, can be considered even in dialectical behavioral therapy. Moving to the second important training, skills training. You have been doing individual therapy, now skills training should be done. Skills training will be done by a second team which the individual therapist will not be involved. Skills training is done by a two important therapists, one is a primary therapist and a co-therapist. That means there is a separate skill training team. Hence, whenever you are starting DBT team, you need to form a skills training team separately. And this skill training team should be properly trained and that team works with you. And you need to select a module and specific skill set which need to be trained to this trainer and these trainers will be doing skills training to all those individuals or clients. Hence, you need to plan for a skill training curriculum and you need to decide how you are going to do the training, whether it should be done in a single over a period of one year or else you will be training for six months and again repeating at the second six months, that means over a period of one year. Whether you will be doing individual group skill training or else group skill training you will be doing. Open versus closed group will be considering whether the client can come in any group or else you need to be in a specific group. At the same time, will you consider all disorders patient in a one group that is homogeneous? That means the group will be comprised only of borderline personality disorder or else the patients may be having eating disorder, OCD or borderline personality. That is heterogeneous group. You can decide about that. You need to clarify the roles of skill trainers, individual therapist, case manager, nurses, line staff and pharmacist in skill training so that the client knows what is the role of each and every person. And now, you need to start about the skill training. The skill training occurs weekly once. Each session lasts for 2 to 3 hours. And each group will be around 6 to 8 person in a group. And there will be one primary therapist and one co-therapist. These sessions last for one year. The session will be 6 month cycle. That means there are 2 cycles over a period of 1 year. What are those skills need to be trained? The skills need to be trained are mindfulness, emotional regulation, distress tolerance or crisis management and interpersonal relationships. These are the important four skills need to be taught to all the clients. Now, moving to the DBT consultation team. One thing I want to tell you, I have made a separate video for skills training. Please go to my 
YouTube channel and find that and watch that. Now moving to the DBT consultation team. You need to form a DBT consultation team. At least two members should be there in the team. You need to meet weekly ones in this team. This team is meant only for the therapist, usually the primary therapist, the one who is providing care. Invariably, in DBT, it is highly demanding, emotionally draining, burnout is very high. Sometimes the therapist will get stuck. Hence, this DBT consultation team will help the therapist in guiding, supporting and keeping the therapist in DBT framework so that weekly ones he will discuss the case with the team and the team will give certain guidance and these will be objective and the therapist need to learn and these are the people who are providing advice are non-involved consultants who are expert in DBT and here invariably in-person meeting occurs if sometimes in-person meeting is not possible online meeting of the service provider should be done here Please remember, in this DBT consultation team, clients are not involved. Only the therapist will be involved and it is like a case conference. They will discuss, they will guide the therapist who is providing services. Please remember, DBT consultation team is very important here. Marshall Linan clearly said that if there is no DBT consultation team means there is no DBT therapy. And why this team came? Marsh M. Linehan clearly said that client cannot fail in this therapy. The people who are going to fail is the therapist or else the DBT therapy. That means there is a high demand on the DBT therapist to perform. That means it comes with emotional turmoil and also burnout in therapist. Hence, the DBT consultation team is very essential in DBT. What is the objective of this DBT team? Primary focus is to support the service provider, that is the primary therapist. Further, the DBT consultation team is to hold the service provider within the DBT framework and to address the problem that arises for the therapist. At the same time, the DBT consultation team provides ideas for enhancing teaching of skills to the therapist, troubleshooting the problems that arises in therapy, increases and maintaining the skills of the therapist, giving support which provides the limits when the limits are crossed or the burnout is there. That means DBT consultation team keeps the therapist on the go by supporting him and keeping in a DBT framework. That is very essential. Further, the DBT consultation team helps in validation, support, providing new ideas to approach the clients if there is a difficult client. Therapist should sometimes may do video recording by the consent of the th client and those videos can be played in front of the therapist, other therapist so that they can understand what is going through and they can give ideas to the DBT therapist how to approach this. It is a kind of supervision and support to the DBT therapist. Hence, DBT consultation team is a must whenever you are providing DBT therapy. Moving to the last part. Telephone support, that is telephone consultation. Many patients require support between the therapy session. Today there is a therapy. Again, after one week, there is one more session. In between the sessions, there are six days. That means crisis can occur anytime, anywhere. And we are dealing with the patient who are highly emotional, highly sensitive and emotional dysregulation will trigger the crisis. And during that crisis, the telephone call to the individual therapist will help. That means, during the intake session only, the client need to be discussed. Who to call, how to call, what is the number, what is the expectation, what is the duration of call and the limitations of call need to be discussed. At the same time, brief determined informal contracts are made between the therapist and client, such as Call will be very 10 minutes. More than 10 minutes, it will not be allowed. At the same time, the therapist may be busy in providing care to another client. That means client need, may need to call 2-3 times. If the therapist is busy, he may call later. Call should be before the crisis. 
if the client is anticipating the crisis he need to make the call or else he should use the skills what he has learnt in group skills training and if the skills are failing he need to make the call at that time and if he is unable to implement this skill during the crisis he need to call if there is a dh attempt dsh attempt that means if the client calls after cutting himself now the limitations kicks in for 24 hours the therapist will not come in contact with the client that means here the rule is made to avoid reinforcement however there is a ethical issue regarding this but this is very essential in dbt and in every crisis situation dbt therapist will assess the dsh and suicidal risk and also violence towards the others appropriate support will be provided keeping the limitations of the phone call need to be discussed before in hand at the same time therapist may be busy in certain situation he may not be able to pick the call in such a scenario the call back or else alternative arrangements can be made to help the clients but however you need to understand the dbt is highly demanding 24 bar 7 calls and the therapist individual therapist should be able to provide now once you are providing the individual therapy or skills training weaning should be planned the discussing of the weaning session should start from the day one at the same time every session you need to discuss how many sessions are left behind space the session skills training sessions how many are remaining have to be discussed focus on relapse prevention empower the client so that the generalization of the skill occurs even in the real setting to conclude my dear friends dialectical behavioral therapy is extensively studied, studied psychotherapy in borderline patients there is a wealth of evidence supporting to the use of this dbt in various psychiatric illness such as bipolar disorder depression eating disorder ocd and various other illnesses dbt is found to be effective in patient across the life span that means dbt is helpful even in children in the middle aged and even in the elderly dbt has four important components that is individual therapy skills training therapy that is in group therapy dbt consultation team and telephone support thank you very much for giving your valuable time stay safe